Hey everybody, welcome to the next commentary. Today we're playing a Jax mid lane versus a Lux on the PBE. The reason why we're playing on the PBE is because recently Jax was changed and there's been a, quite a few changes. He still has the same theme, like all of his abilities basically do the same thing, but some are, have been changed like damage wise and stuff. So basically what's been uh, done has been... Uh, they made changes to make it so he has more magic damage so he can be a better AP champion now. Um... That doesn't mean that he's going to be played as an AP person, but he definitely can be. So his passive, exactly the same. You get attack speed every single auto attack that ramps up to a certain point. His Q no longer has an AP ratio. It used to have an AP ratio. It's gone. So we don't max that anymore. Um, w exactly the same. It's one of the first things that you max. It has a very low cooldown. Makes it so your next auto attacker Q deals bonus magic damage. Your E used to deal physical damage. It doesn't anymore. Now it's magic damage. Does percent max HP plus it has a 100% AP ratio. 100% AP ratio is pretty damn big. And then his ultimate finally, you can see it's about the range of a Diana ultimate. And when he presses it, he just swings in a circle, hits everybody once. And that also has a 100% AP ratio. So he has two AoE easy to land abilities that honestly, he might deal more damage than like a Diana, which is crazy to me, as AP Jax, just landing your spells. So um, the whole plan is just, I'm going to go for the more consistent build path, which is probably like Nasher's Tooth, because Nasher's Tooth just gives you 100 AP and attack speed. And attack speed helps out with everything because you still have your three hit passive and things. So I want to play around um, what is what a more realistic uh, type build would be rather than just going like proto belt and things. Because um, if you only go straight AP, it doesn't really work well with his attack speed and his three hit passive still exists. Uh, not to mention, they also made it so with his three hit passive uh when you do use your ultimate and you hit somebody you get bonus stats so it's still the same of you getting stats when you use your ultimate that's what it was beforehand but it just didn't do damage but also when you land it uh it lasts eight seconds the armor and magic resist from your ult it also will make it so your three hit passive from your ulti is a two hit passive so that's also pretty nice um because then you can spam more often your autos to just deal more. Okay, good damage back. Using our uh, counter strike to jump on her. You kind of just want to wait for their cooldowns, jump in. Uh, use your W as an auto attack reset during the early game. So it's just Q on top of them, auto them once. And then, uh, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here. I should just leave. That was dumb. I thought that I was like maybe in range for my leap strike, but I definitely was not. Okay, cool. She used her E. Can we get her Q out without getting hit by it? I have Ghost. She has Ignite. She might use E on the wave, possibly. We're doing uh, pretty good CS-wise here. Oh. Cancel my auto. Your mana cost on your W isn't that bad. It only costs 30, so I think that's the main thing you want to be using on, like, minions if you ever need to grab them. But otherwise, you should not use your other spells because it would cost too much mana. That's all fine with me. Good poke. Just poke her again. Just kill her, bop her on the head. Oh, and I get out of tower. Jeez, that was close. Okay, cool. So what I did was I flash stunned him. This does a lot of good magic damage. Auto attack reset W. So every single time I'm trying to get an auto attack off before activating W. So we get more damage off. And then uh, following up with the Q at the very end. It's all about the auto attack resets during the early game. So 
And then we can go for like this. So this is for the Nasher's Tooth. And then um the Dark Seal, the Snowball. These are the runes that I'm running this game. Oh, these are the runes. Uh, I don't really know if these runes are best, but I just think that the Conquer is kind of nice and the Legend Tenacity to make it so you're not just getting CC to death. Um, the Conquer gives you bonus AP or whatever it might be that you're building. In this case, I am building AP, so. I'm almost level six. Okay, level six. Okay, got her flash. Every single second auto attack now did the bonus there, so it would only take one more auto for that bonus damage, but we didn't get her. She's dangerously low. We might just dive her. It doesn't matter if I die. What matters is that we can just deny this wave. Never mind. She's just dead. All right, cool. Yeah, so the thing about AP Jax, and I feel like this is kind of unironically kind of broken. I don't know what you guys think about the rework. Think about just normal standard Jax. Now Jax just has more damage on his... Um, ultimate because beforehand is he didn't have any damage on his ultimate uh, let's just hit him once and then Q back so what I did was the guy's level 5 he uses W which is his only escape in front of my face so what I'm gonna do is just step up and I'm gonna stun him under tower after prepping two auto attacks. So what you want to do is with your three hit passive, it doesn't tell you when you're ramping it, but if you do it in like quick succession, that's how the three hit passive works. So I bopped a minion twice. So then my three hit passive will be next. Stun, hit him with the W and the three hit passive one shot and then jump out of the tower range afterwards. You can play aggressive even under tower if you just walk up, hit them with something and then immediately jump back out to your creeps. Of course, you need your creeps to jump back to, because if you don't, then it's kind of bad, but. Okay, she used her Q. Without her Q, it's very difficult to stop me from going in, so. We'll just bop her a little bit. I'll be honest, I've been playing a lot of this Jax mid because, um... People will go AFK because I win too hard, and I feel like it's not even because I'm playing necessarily well, but it seems as though if you become online, it becomes increasingly difficult to play against it because Jax is a point-and-click ability. Similar to playing versus things like Trindamir mid, anything that is just, I'm gonna stat check you and jump on you, feels really frustrating to play against because it feels like there's almost no counterplay. Um... Like, if you step up, you're just going to get hit with everything. Of course, with Lux, I mean, she does have her snare. That's the biggest thing. If she does snare correctly, it's actually kind of hard to punish her. So, she does have something to work with. Like that. Like, that just seems absolutely bonkers. So, what I did, I jump on top of her with my E, auto attack, W, reset. I use my ultimate before I use my W because that makes it so my uh, three hit passive is now a two hit passive. So, you saw that. All I had to do is auto once, press W, that procs that, that also uses the W in power. We we have 100 AP, and my 3 hit passive does 162, and this does 2 foot 50, so I'm talking about 400 point and click auto attack damage. It's, it's actually just insane how much damage you can deal, not even counting my E or ultimate uh, proc. That's just the, the auto attacks. So I'm just going to take all of her CS in front of her face and then leave. Oh, Zed got a kill. Maybe I can rotate to help. Okay, the way that he's running means that I should be able to maybe get him. Does he have ult? Damn, dude. Okay, I'm just gonna flash over. I want those double buffs really bad. Hey there. I can probably fight this guy. Oh! Oh my god, I actually... How did his shield just disappear? Uh, I'm just gonna base here. I mean, I do have my Thresh nearby, so I feel like if Lux comes, I'll be okay. 
We have Nashua's Tooth now. I have Sorks. So now we're going to make it so Nashua's has its own AP ratio of 20%. Um, doesn't show up, but it does have an AP ratio. So that means that because we're doing auto attack resets, because you want to Q, auto, and then W, you can just assume they have a 40% AP ratio. The, the the total combo for Jax, this is crazy, right? Think about other mages. I don't know a good example off the top of my head, but the total combo of landing everything on somebody, the ratio, the AP ratio, is 320%. So if you land E, W, one auto attack from your three hit passive, and then use your ultimate, all of that together is 320%. A lot of mages in the game don't even have an AP ratio that high. That's how crazy it is. Like, tell me what she can do versus that. It's a point and click, so easy to land thing. Just jump on top of her face, use your stun to keep her locked down, press ulti, press W, everybody just dies instantly. This is a little bit different because I don't have my ultimate anymore, but that guy also would have died. This is probably going to be a 15 minute game. So, yeah, AP Jax, absolutely bonkers. This was such a massive buff to him. The thing is about AP Jax is I feel like it already functioned somewhat well. But now, it's more than just well. <laughs> now, it now functions like a real champion. Because beforehand, it felt like you just kind of focus on playing around... Um, your your W and your three hit passive. So you would like prep your three hit passive on creeps, jump on top of them, hit them with the W, and then it's kind of done because uh, you, your counter strike did physical damage with old jacks and your Q, even though it had an AP ratio, it, it also did physical damage. So building pen wasn't really that good, but now you can build pen. Now you can build penetration because he has enough magic damage that you can focus on three separate abilities that all deal magic. And this is just a gap close. That's all it's used for. That's why I do an Emax instead. It lowers the cooldown. And you can see right now, this at 260 AP, we're not even insanely fed, right? 500 AP would be absolutely bonkers. But this does 511 damage when I press the key. AoE, 511. I can easily jump into, what, like three people? Hit this for 400, this for 500, I get bonus, I get bonus armor and magic resist, and I will just absolutely chunk everybody like I'm a Diana immediately. It's crazy. It's absolutely bonkers. Uh, I guess we can just one-shot this guy. Oh, never mind. This minion is wave is here. I was going to try to catch her through the fog of war, but... I'm so sorry. So sorry this has to happen. Uh, I guess we'll now kill this guy as well. Uh, I didn't even land my E. I All I did was just press my ultimate and then just hit him a couple times because... Uh, since I did land it, it made me tankier. Then the three hit passive became two, so it's just very easy to continually proc it. So imagine every single two auto attacks does 300 damage. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? It sounds ridiculous to me. Every two autos deals 300 damage. <laughs> this does 362. This one shotter. Uh, they're probably going to FF at 15, but I really wanted to showcase what Jax would be like at like full build, but. Um... It's been ridiculously hard getting games. Um, here. I'll come. Okay, cool. I died. That's good. Because I, I don't want them to FF because I always want to showcase a champion and not just stomp because I want to show how it's functioning as a real champion. Because I think this really could be played. Um, 
Like, I'm totally down to play inside of Hilo. I can't because it's on the PBE. But if if these changes do go through and he keeps the ratios that he has now of 100%, 100% on these two abilities that are AoE, I'm totally down to try this out uh, when it reaches live server, which is probably like two to three weeks from now. It's going to take a really long time before it reaches live. But um, another thing that was recently changed on live servers is AP Tom Kench. I already made a video on that like a month ago. But that did reach live servers. I still think AP Tom Kench is very strong right now. So. It's so good that my teammates are dying. God damn it, the FF. Well, anyways, hopefully you guys see the proof of concept about AP Jax. Why I think that this actually might become a real legitimate pick that can climb. And might look fun to play. If, you, if you're a fan of... It really feels like Diana. If you guys have are Diana enjoyers, it has the same play style of... Like, Diana lands Q, jumps in, presses ultimate. It's so similar to her. So, anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think about the pick. Whether you guys think that maybe it is uh, something that seems strong. Um, and almost so strong to the point that he'll become, like, a, a, a stomper for, like, uh, Smurf accounts. Because the thing is that... It, even if his, let's say, like, Lux can deal just as much damage as Jax and she's a range champion, she has no, she has skill shots. The whole entire reason why I think that this is so good is because I'm point and click once again. I'm a point and click champion. I just press my keys on top of you and I can just go in. So that is a huge selling point why this could be good. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'm sorry that it was so stompy. But at least I got the proof of concept down, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.